as my friend Marty Sanders from uh, Vector Security once said, you know, hire right, sleep well at night. And um, and really that's been kind of the key to our success. We really look at the type of people we hire. We want to make sure um, they fit in culturally and fit in with the chemistry. Welcome to Growth Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammond. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Scaling your business requires the right team. Today, we look at building and hiring the right team with our special guest, founder of the Pipeline Group, Ken Jesser. Ken and I talk about what does it really look like to hire the right team first. We talk about the question he loves to ask most, what's most important in the hiring process, and some of the critical elements that they do differently than others. They've scaled their company to number 415 on the Inc. list. They were uh, now 250 employees. And I share all this with you because I think listening to this episode will change your mind about what's most important inside of growing your your business and it's not what you think it is. That's my tease today. When you think about your own journey as a leader, hopefully you're evolving. I find a lot of leaders don't understand this one concept that the, it's called the cascading effect of leadership. Their skills of being a leader and their strengths are flowing down throughout the organization. Strengths are translating pretty well because that's what people see because you're leading by example. But here's the bad news. Also translating and transferring your weaknesses. This is a dangerous place because if you're avoiding difficult conversations, if you're not holding people accountable, if you're not truly developing the people the way you need to, then you are missing that opportunity because that's what others are picking up on. And eventually you'll have a company that doesn't really grow and is not really working and, and ceases to be fun anymore. Now, I share all this with you because if you are feeling the same thing inside your organization, and you want to continue growth, then make sure you check out this free gift I have. Now, if you could have picked this on your own, you would have done it already. And, and the fact that it's still playing around in your mind and you're still thinking about it means you need to have a conversation about it, but you're not having with anyone else. That's what I'm offering you. This is a gift. Do yourself a favor. Go to genehammett.com, schedule your call. Let's talk about what's really getting in the way and let's take your leadership to that next level. Just go to genehammett.com. I'm waiting for your call. Now let's jump right into the interview with Ken. Ken, how are you? I'm doing very well, Gene. How are you? I'm fantastic. Excited to have you here on the Growth Think Tank podcast. We're going to talk about building the right team. Before we get there, tell us about the Pipeline Group. Yeah, so we started the Pipeline Group about four years ago and uh, started the company in my garage with my head of operations sleeping on my couch and uh, my CTO working out of his garage because there was no way in heck my wife was going to have three people in her garage. So uh, three guys, two garages, and four years later, grown to about 250 employees globally. And what we do is we help companies build pipeline faster to grow valuation in their company faster. Uh, so much of our business comes from private equity and venture capital partners when they make investments in software companies, tech companies. Uh, they often ask us to do an assessment on their go-to-market. What we do is we provide sales development resources as a service with a bunch of managed services around them to make sure they're successful helping our customers build pipeline faster. I want to go a little bit into that, the business of this, because I think it really relates to the audience here. What is the biggest myth that gets in the way of pipeline growth? Yeah, um, well, uh, one that we see very often is I'm going to buy a tool and it's going to solve my problems. I'm going to invest in some AI machine learning. Uh, it's going to solve my problems. I'm going to buy this database. It's going to solve our problems. And, you know, if, if it was just that easy to solve that problem, to buy a tool, buy a database, then I guess we'd be out of business. Um, and life's not fair. It takes more than that. Um, you know, when, to build consistent, long-term, sustainable, and very predictable pipeline, it's actually a combination of having the right data, having the right process, having the right tech stack, having the right content, having the right person with the right mindset um, to make all of that work for you. Um, and so what we did is took a very complex problem that usually takes about five to seven people to try to uh, coordinate and orchestrate together. And we provide that whole thing as a service. So having done, done this many, many times, we've made a lot of mistakes. And so we just have this unique advantage to seeing what really works and what doesn't so we can get our customers building pipeline faster. I'm glad we went into that details because it helps us understand what you actually are doing with companies. So now we can dive into our real topic today, which is building the right team. You, you mentioned 20, uh, no, 250 employees. Why is building the right team important for a company that wants to continue to grow? Well, as my friend Marty Sanders from uh, Vector Security 
Security once said, you know, hire right, sleep well at night. And um, and really, that's been kind of the key to our success. We really look at the type of people we hire. We want to make sure um, they fit in culturally and fit in with the chemistry. Um, what we do, Gene, is not very easy. We, you know, we're constantly under pressure uh, from the venture capital partners and the private equity partners that introduce us into their portfolio to drive a 3x ROI with the pipeline that we're building. And so it requires us to um, hire people that are very result oriented and focused. And just as you know, in sales, there's uh, peaks and valleys. So being able to uh, dig your dig your heels in pretty uh, hard when the when the valleys come and help you get to the peaks. I mean, we find that we have to interview people in, in a different way to make sure they've got the right mindset and can and and can have the right uh, um, approach to things when um, when the going gets tough. Well, you got me curious. What is this different way of interviewing people? Yeah, so we you know we go through a, um, a recruiting and hiring. So the company was designed to be virtual from day one. Um, we started that way because um, we couldn't afford an office at the time, and so um, so it became increasingly harder to make sure you're recruiting and um, hiring the right people. So what we have to do differently was everyone first of all that comes to the interview says they can do the job. Um, and so what we have to do is think about not only what they're saying, but and testing them to do the job, but really looking at their character as well as a person. So one of my favorite questions to ask in an interview is, you know, tell me about a time where experienced a real hardship, um, personally and professionally, and uh, and tell me how you've been able to overcome that hardship and what you learned from that process. And uh, when you ask that question, Gene, you get a lot of really interesting answers. We've seen, um, you know, you'll hear some people say, oh, I got really bad grades and I have to study harder and all the rest. But then you'll hear stories like, well, I came to this country as an orphan. We were homeless and we have to dig our way out of being homeless to get to where we're at today. So, you know, you really get to test people's character when you ask that question. And so that's one of the big um, things we look for is, you know, is this person, our playbook is really simple. We look for people that have kind of hit a cap in whatever they were doing previously. Um, and they're looking to crack their way into tech sales, but characterly, characteristically, we're looking for people that are more mature, kind of have the right mindset or super hungry and have experienced hardships in their life where they've been able to overcome them um, and learn from that process. Those individuals that really blend well with our company and uh, kind of fit in nicely. So those are some of the things that we test for. Now, Ken just talked about this key question that he asked in hiring the right people. And he asked them about, tell me about a hardship that you've overcome. Now, the real core behind this is to, to see where they are and if they've overcome some hardships. But I want to give you some a different insight around this that will help you take it even a step further. And it's this, ask them why didn't they get to this faster or what was really standing in their way. If they blame others, then that means they're probably not willing to take ownership of this themselves. They, they probably are wanting to transfer that to someone else. And that really is a sign that you need to be paying attention to. What you want are people who are willing to own their own mistakes and own their own hardships. And that is the key to this question, I think, that will unlock an even another level of, of greatness, if you will. When you want to hire the right people and hire for the right team, it really is necessary for you to have the right questions and the right processes around this. That's what we're looking at today with Ken. Now back to our interview. Glad we went through that because I think that gives us some insight to uh, you know what you're looking for in that process. And it is quite different because I don't, I've never heard anybody explain it to me that way. Building the right team is a lot of things. Um, it requires you to develop those people. What do you have, what have you learned in this journey of developing people the right way? So what we learned is, is we have to apply a checklist. I mean, we see issues arise. I hate to say this, but we built this company off of checklists. When you when we look at problem accounts or issues popping up with our customers, um, we apply checklists to the data systems and process, and then we apply checklists to the people as well um, to make sure they're, they're articulating the message correctly, they're going about it in the right way. And so um, we do a lot of remote coaching. Um, we built technology to help us manage a virtual sales team. So we have this unique ability to whisper into a, a seller's ear without a prospect hearing us. Um, we can also, uh, we run 
a lot of role playing sessions, training sessions, and we don't just put one trainer or one manager to work with that person. We uh, have lots of different people managers, lots of different directors in the company now, and uh, we get different takes from different people. You know, one person can give you a bit of feedback but to hear it. You know, once is an accident, twice is a coincidence, and then three times is a trend. Right? Um, it allows us to just validate and invalidate the subjective, um, sometimes aspects of evaluating people to really get down to what's the crux of the issue. Interesting approach to developing the team. You also have to, and I'm assuming here that you have some core values that the company runs by. Is that consistent with the way you approach it, your business? Totally. Um, you know, having worked, my, my pedigree was working in tech companies. So, um, you know, you see sometimes as companies grow very fast, um, the culture sp spirals out of control. And um, that's one of the things that we wanted to make sure didn't happen here. So we really, you know, we have a very simple Simple saying, we just don't hire jerks into the company. We want to make sure we're hiring people that are coachable, adaptable, super smart, super hungry, uh, want to work hard because that's who I am and that's who the executive leadership team is. Those are the characteristics of our entire team. So making sure we have someone come in that actually complements that culture uh, is very, very important to us. Whenever there's one person not working as hard or um, you know doing the bare minimum um, versus trying to uh, break through when the going gets tough. You know, what we find is it puts a, um, it demotivates the rest of the team. Like everyone's, you know, people will come to us and say, why am I working this hard and this person isn't? So we try to avoid those scenarios by getting like-minded people in similar situations with similar career paths and goals, financial objectives and all the rest. So something we routinely test. And this whole topic is about building the right team. What else do we need to talk about to make sure that the right team is on board with us and as we keep moving forward? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that we do is not just look, um, when we hire, we don't just want to hire and train and develop people professionally, but we try to train and we try to develop people personally as well. Uh, we find that we have less attrition, um, more loyalty with our team when we get into helping them not only professionally, but personally um, in their lives. Like some things that we've done in the past that I don't think most other companies would do is, you know, people have had tragedy happen in their life. You know, life throws up at them. And we've taken actions and, and have done things that um, normally most companies wouldn't do. Um, it would require kind of board level approval, et cetera. Like one example that comes to mind is uh, one of our top uh, performers, her father passed away and uh, she was living in Washington and her father was in California. And obviously she called me in, 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 in a hysteric situation saying, hey, um, I'm going to drive down from Washington to California. And I just said, give me one hour. Let me call you back. And uh, what we did is we had someone pick her up, take her to California, stay in California until she had her business taken care of, and then drive her back to Washington. And we uh, took care of all the expenses associated with it. Um, when you do things like that, that are abnormal um, and unusual and show how much you actually care about person, not only professionally, but personally, it goes a long way. It just establishes a loyalty in the company that you wouldn't, you can't just buy and you can't just train and develop. It comes with just being a good person and having good characteristics and, you know, making sure the rest of the team is operating in the same way. That's a powerful story. And I'm sure you've got dozens of others that you could give us an example with. You've got 250 employees. When you think about that type of leadership is it's not just you, it's, it's many, it's cascading down throughout the organization. So how are others, how do you kind of lead and manage that across the organization? Yeah, no, I mean, so we have, um, when our managers are working with a team, um, you know, you pick up a little soundbite of what's happening in people's lives both personally and professionally. And um, what's great about it is, you know, we need to understand what's happening in the, uh, in the, in our customers' environments with the person, with the systems, with the data, with the process, with the content. But when we work individually with our team, uh, we learn a lot about them and what's happening uh, in their lives. And um, we do, we like to be proactive in recognizing hardships that can happen in people's lives, financial situations that pop up unexpectedly in people's lives lives and help them through those tough situations. Um, it's really important for us as a company to make sure we uh, establish that that uh, loyalty within the within the organization. And so, you know, we really pride ourselves in going above and beyond the call of duty, not just being an employer, having an employer and employee relationship, but having personal relationship. It's one of the fun things about being able to be a leader is mentoring and, and, uh, and helping 
people achieve you know career goals and financial goals that they, they, they didn't think was possible entering into the company. Now, Ken just talked about being proactive. Now that's a really important skill set and mindset of anyone who is a leader. I think that being proactive is underrated. In fact, a lot of people are more reactive to the world. They're they're reactive to the fires that are in front of them. They're reactive to all of the, the problems that employees have and customers have, and they're reacting to this constantly. And that translates across the organization. You've got a little bit of a problem because the best organizations, the ones that are truly fun to work in, the, people, the ones that give us energy are the ones that are intentional and proactive. So you've got to break this reactive mode. One way to do that is truly to look at yourself and start with yourself first and say, you know, where am I being reactive that I could be more intentional or proactive? And that is a really good place to start inside of this entire journey of, of breaking that mode. Now back to Ken. I've got a curveball question for you here because I, I remember giving a, a workshop for a company before and I talked about the importance of caring for your employees. And the founder asked the question and I, and I get the fact that he said he's been taken advantage of because he cared too much. How do you address caring too much for your people? Yeah, um, I'd rather care too much than not care at all. Um, we make this things yeah. and we've been burned by being sometimes a little too nice, but it's just not going to change who we are and how we do things. Um, I think for the majority, it works the, uh, it works the majority of the time in terms of really establishing personal and professional relationships with individuals. Um, so we're just not going to change who we are just because we got burned um, a half a dozen times or whatever. We, fit, we find that it goes a long way for us and for them, um, just being good people. So we're going to carry that motto forward. Well, I'm glad you shared with us, you know, the real details behind that. You have been burned by this because some people will take advantage of it, but I bet across the organization, the culture really sees that is you're doing the right thing and this, these other employees are not um, yeah. consistently. And, and that will help build that loyalty that you kept talking about. This whole conversation is about building the right team. Is there anything we've left out that you think is important, Ken? Yeah, I was just thinking about some of the mistakes we made um, in hiring. And, um, and you know, one of the things that we, we you know, sometimes when we interview um, candidates, you know, they're they're telling us everything we want to hear. And in most cases, you know, we we uh, we believe them, right? And we've come to find out that it wasn't actually the case, um, or um, it wasn't the, um, it wasn't the, uh, what we expected it, or um, wasn't the true situation. Um, but I'll tell you, after, you know, speaking to a lot of our team members, the way we go about doing things in terms of um, recruiting and hiring and interviewing and the questions that we ask and getting involved into the real character of the person, it's helped us um, hire more of the right people um, and make less mistakes. So again, we have like a checklist for training and for recruiting and hiring and that, and we break the checklist, you know, checklists were designed to be broken. And whenever we do break that checklist, we just add another check to the, to the checklist to make sure we check that the next time. So uh, what I, what my advice is, is, um, is, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. You'll learn from them, you know, comfort and growth, they cannot coexist. And so, um, you know, break the boundary, keep pushing on. Love all of this, Ken. You've shared a lot with us about building the right team. Appreciate you being here and uh, giving us these insights. Thanks, Gene. Appreciate your time. So in this portion, I want to just kind of reflect back on what I'm picking up from this interview so that help you as the listener. Building the right team takes a lot of intention. It takes, you know, the, the carefulness of this. You kept talking about checklists. Uh, we said it you know, dozens of times in this, probably the most ever in any interview. But I really uh, believe that when you want to create consistent growth and predictable growth, just like you do in your sales process, you have a sales a checklist that allows you to do that. And then you, you learn and modify that. But then the other parts of this is creating loyalty through care of really uh, shows a, a great sign of leadership. And a lot of leaders just aren't willing to do this. They're so focused on the work. They're so focused on executing and hitting the goals and the KPIs. And I get those things, but leadership is not about just that. It's about developing the people around you and, and that level of connection and caring. That's what we heard today. So building the right team takes all of these things working together. Now you may be curious about what your next step as a leader. Maybe you're struggling with accountability or maybe you're struggling with communication effectively the way you want to. I want to help you with that. My job is to help you be the best leader you can be. I have clients that are growing fast and they really do want to be extraordinary leaders. You want to have that conversation with me. It's a gift, absolute gift for you. Do yourself a favor. Go to genehammett.com, schedule your call. I'd love to help you figure out what's getting in the way of you being the, the leader that your team deserves. Just go to genehammett.com and uh, schedule that call right now. When you think of growth and you think of leadership, think of growth think tank as always with courage. We'll see you next time.